Hello everybody, this is John Brewer. Today on Large Ship Combat 101, we're going to talk about hyperdrives. Many times in this series, we've mentioned the top speed of large ships being 104.4 meters per second. Ships under thrust, though, frequently read speeds higher than that, sometimes much higher. We frequently see these ships referred to as having hyperdrives, or warp drives. Today we're going to examine why we get high indicated speeds, and then we're going to demonstrate that indicated speed is not actual speed. In this thruster-driven spaceship, we can see that when I hold down the forward button, I get an indicated speed of 104.7 meters per second. When I stop thrusting, my speed drops to 104.4 meters per second. In this large gravity-driven ship, I can actually get an indicated speed of over 210 meters per second. But again, it drops to 104.4 meters per second as soon as I disengage the gravity drive. So how is my indicated speed calculated? As we've mentioned before, the physics engine in Space Engineers steps 60 times a second or so. When a ship is under thrust, it calculates the indicated speed as the ship's current speed plus 1 60th of its acceleration. Of course, acceleration is just the thrust provided by the engines divided by the mass of the ship. So in my thruster-powered spaceship, the four large thrusters produce a combined 4.8 million newtons of force, while the mass of the ship is just a bit over a quarter of a million kilos. That tells me the ship accelerates at 19.1 meters per second per second when going forward. In one physics step, or 1 60th of a second, that amounts to a velocity change of about 0.3 meters per second. Hence, our indicated speed is 104.7 meters per second. Likewise, the second ship's two gravity-driven nacelles generate a staggering 19.6 billion newtons of force accelerating the 3 million kilogram ship at an astounding 6,410 meters per second. Each step of the physics engine, the ship's velocity changes by 106.8 meters per second, giving us the indicated 211.2 .2 meters per second. So if our instruments are telling us that we're going over 200 meters per second, how can we check to see if they're correct? To find out, we need to go to the large ship combat speed track. This large instrument is a 1,000 meter track that starts a rotor when a ship breaks the starting plane and stops it when the ship breaks the ending plane. The rotor rotates 10 degrees per second, so we can tell how long it took the ship to run the track to a tenth of a second or so. Let's start with a run in the thruster ship. We accelerate up to the maximum velocity before we reach the starting sensor, and then we fly the length of the course. Now that we've passed the finish line, we check our rotor. The rotor has rotated 95 degrees, meaning it took the ship 9.5 seconds to run the course. That reading would be consistent with either 104.4 or 104.7 meters per second. Now let's fly the same course with our gravity-powered ship. Again, our indicated speed is 211.2 meters per second. We immediately notice that when the engine is engaged, the time the physics engine takes to calculate a step jumps from a fraction of a millisecond to well over 20 milliseconds. This physics engine lag is why it is critical that we use the in-universe rotor clock to measure time, as opposed to using a real-life stopwatch. After flying the course, though, we can check our time. Again, we find that we flew the course in 9.6 seconds, rather than the 4.7 seconds we would have expected if we were actually traveling at our indicated speed. Hence, our indicated speed is just an illusion. In terms of actually moving through the game world, we're still limited to just 104.4 meters per second in large ships. For viewers who want to verify my results, or want to test their own method of getting past 104.4, I've put a link to the speed track on the Steam Workshop in the description. Thanks again for watching Large Ship Combat 101. I'm John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.